Welcome to Second Recapped. At the beginning of the movie, Mills is sitting on the beach with his daughter Navine, explaining to his wife Alia that he has taken a two-year exploration position. He usually makes short runs, but this time he needs the extra money to pay for Navine's illness care. Mills then shows Navine how to whistle with her hands before ultimately detailing his vacation with her as well. Mills subsequently becomes the pilot in command of a ship carrying a crew in cryogenic sleep. The ship encounters unexpected meteorite activity one day and is hit many times by meteorite fragments. Mills rushes to the cockpit and sends an emergency signal while directing the ship to crash on the next planet as the ship begins to disintegrate. The ship eventually splits in two, and as Mills watches the inevitable collapse, he thinks of his daughter before passing out. Mills wakes up minutes later to hear the computer declare they're in an unknown area. He detects a piece of metal embedded in his stomach and painstakingly removes it before cauterizing the wound. He then dons his astronaut suit and begins inspecting the spacecraft to establish the extent of the damage, learning that the cryochamber has been damaged. Mills exits the spacecraft, taking a laser rifle just in case, and walks into a pool of water, where a bizarre monster swims about him. He also discovers all his crew's bodies and is devastated to see that none of them survived. Mills sends another SOS transmission indicating he's in an uncharted region after inspecting the entire ship for damage and discovering the escape pod is on the other half that crashed somewhere else. Mills, feeling stuck and helpless, grabs grabs his gun with the intention of ending things, but memories of Navine stop him. Then Mills collects all the tapes with the messages Navine has been sending him in order to hear her voice again. The computer suddenly discovers an operational capsule nearby. Mills rushes to check and is startled to find passenger Koa still alive inside so he takes her out right away. On their trip back to the spacecraft, Mills finds a massive paw print on the ground, revealing that this planet is Earth 65 million years ago, implying that Mills is surrounded by dinosaurs. When darkness falls, the couple arrives at the ship, and Mills spends the night dreaming of Navine demanding to know where he is. Mills resolves to flee the next morning in order to save the girl. He uses the ship's computer to find the other half of the vessel, but the scan can't locate it. Afterward Mills goes outside to explore the area and discovers huge bones that indicate how dangerous the local predators are. He was also accidentally hit by a hot geyser blast, which he had never seen before. Once he recovers, he sees something shining in the distance and realizes the other ship half is on a far mountain. A quick scan confirms it, and when Mills begins to consider what path to take, he's suddenly attacked by a small dinosaur. After some struggle with the creature, Mills pushes it to the ground and hits it with his gun until it's dead. There are more noises coming from the woods, and when Mills goes to investigate, he discovers Koa has left the ship. The girl begins running as soon as she sees him, and Mills runs after her until they both fall down a ledge where they find a big yet dead dinosaur. Suddenly the trees start shaking and Mills sees an even bigger creature approaching, so he grabs Koa and drags her back to the ship. While he takes care of the wound she got when she fell, he tries to explain the situation but it turns out they don't speak the same language and the ship's translator isn't working. To make his point, Mills spreads a red powder on a tablet and draws the mountain with the pod to explain they must get there to escape. Koa joins him and draws her parents as she understands the word family. So to keep her calm, Mills lies and says her family is in the mountain too. Afterward, Mills sends out another SOS message saying he's found a survivor while Koa finds the recordings of Navine. As she watches them all, it's revealed that during the first year of traveling, Navine's illness got worse, and she had to be sent to the hospital. During the first few months her messages were happy and proud of her dad but as time passed, she became angry with him because he wasn't there for her. When Mills finds Koa watching the tapes, he immediately turns them off and announces they're leaving. Once he has enough supplies in his bag, Mills and Koa begin walking through the wilderness, making sure to keep quiet not to attract predators. It's a long and arduous journey, but every time Mills helps Koa when she falls or needs anything, they become a little closer. One afternoon Koa sees something glowing red in the sky, but she doesn't comment on it. Eventually Koa becomes bored of all the walking and grabs some berries from a bush to throw at Mills just to bother him. Annoyed, Mills uses his scan to prove the berries are poisonous and orders Koa not to mess with them. Later, a huge bug lands on Mills' neck and when he kills it with his hand, his fingers end up covered in a disgusting sticky substance. Mills tries to brush it off on a tree, but the thing is so strong that he falls with a piece of bark stuck to his hand, which makes Koa laugh. To tease her back, Mills tries to touch her with his dirty hand but their little game is interrupted when a small tree falls in front of them. There are some weird noises coming from behind the ledge, and the duo finds a small dinosaur stuck in a pit of the sticky substance. Koa feels bad for it and runs to help it out, which Mills thinks is too dangerous. Since she won't listen, Mills ends up helping her to finish faster. The little creature walks away as soon as it's free but only a few steps later it's attacked by a group of predators that quickly kill it. Mills drags Koa into a hiding spot so she doesn't have to watch her friend being devoured, 
but she can tell what's going on and cries. After the dinosaurs are gone, the duo continues their journey, stopping by a waterfall to wash and fill their water bottle. Mills is worried about the state of his stomach wound, but watching Koa makes him think of Navine and that's enough incentive to keep him going. Koa finds some pretty flowers and bothers Mills until he lets her put one in his hair. Minutes later, Mills' scanner loses the location of the mountain, so he decides to climb a tree for a better view and scan the area again. Suddenly, he finds a bug on his hand and shakes his arm to get it off, but the movement causes the branch to break and Mills falls dislocating his arm, while Koa helps Mills push his arm against a tree to try to put it back into place. A group of dinosaurs hears the noise and begins approaching. To speed things up, Mills makes Koa step on his arm for that final push, and now that he's better he immediately grabs the gun to shoot at the creatures. He also tells Koa to run, and once she's far enough, Mills activates a few small bombs that quickly get rid of half of the dinosaurs. The survivors continue to jump on Mills, and he shoots them one by one. Meanwhile a bunch of flying dinos lands near Koa, so she begins crawling away to hide behind a tree. Unfortunately, the beasts from before finding her and when they are about to jump on her, Mills shows up and kills them all. However, there's one hiding that suddenly jumps on Koa from behind and drags her away with its tail. Mills quickly goes after them and scares the creature away with a shot. Now Koa is too scared to continue or even be near him, thus Mills sits down and patiently gives her some space. When it's starting to get dark, Mills decides to whistle like he used to do for Navine to try to calm Koa down. The trick works and Koa responds with her family's own method of whistling, finally agreeing to keep going. After lots of walking, the duo makes it to a cave where they'll spend the night. Mills sets up some sensors that will warn them of potential danger and uses his scanner to look at the sky, which finally makes him notice the meteorite is nearby. It's a small one though so he doesn't worry. Koa suddenly distracts him by revealing she's brought one of Navine's tapes with her, and while Mills at first is angry, then he plays the tape because Navine brings comfort to both of them. While Mills tries to sleep, he can't stop thinking about the day Alia contacted him to tell him Navine had died in the hospital, which makes him cry. Later in the night, Mills is woken up by the sensors warning him of incoming danger. When he checks on Koa, he discovers a bug has entered her mouth and he immediately uses a tool to kill it, leaving Koa to cough out all the remains. Then the sensors begin going crazy and at that moment, a huge dinosaur appears outside the cave. Mills shoots it a couple of times before he and Koa run through a small hole at the back of the cave. The duo immediately begins looking for a path out, unaware that a smaller dinosaur is following them. After lots of walking and going through narrow spaces, the duo is upset to discover they've reached a dead end. Mills finds a small space between two rocks and tries to dig to make it bigger, but after a few hours he's barely made any progress and decides to give up. When Koa notices, she becomes furious and demands to try again as she keeps saying family, so Mills tries to tell her they're dead, but she can't understand him. Thinking that he lacks proper tools, Mills suddenly gets an idea. He uses a few bombs to make the hole big enough for a kid, then gives Koa the rest of the bombs to be safe while she explores. Koa crawls through the narrow hole and confirms there's enough room on the other side, so Mills tries to follow her. Unfortunately, the hole suddenly collapses, and Mills desperately yells in frustration when he loses contact with Koa. At that moment, Mills hears the dinosaur approaching, thus he grabs his gun and returns to the previous cave, where he uses his scanner to know where the dinosaur is. When the creature tries to attack him from behind, Mills expects it and begins shooting it, but the dinosaur hits him and makes him drop the gun. Then the beast grabs Mills and bites his arm, but Mills fights it off until he manages to reach his scanner and activates a screeching sound that hurts the dinosaur's ears. With the animal distracted, Mills retrieves his gun and kills it. Meanwhile Koa makes it outside. She explores the forest alone and finds a huge bone that she can use as a weapon, so she wraps it up with poisonous berries and a big leaf before putting it away in the back. Minutes later, Mills manages to leave the cave and when he sees that a huge meteorite is coming closer, he uses his scanner to learn that the meteorite he saw before for had only been a broken piece of a bigger one that will hit in a few hours, triggering a catastrophic extinction event. He immediately goes looking for Koa and hears her scream when a dinosaur approaches her. Koa rushes to hide inside a tree trunk while Mills runs in her direction, but he trips and falls right into a pit of quicksand. He tries to call for Koa, but he slowly sinks until he can't talk anymore. Koa hears Mills call, so she gathers her courage and waits for the dinosaur to enter the tree trunk to throw the bombs at it before running. With the beast dead, Koa can safely reach the quicksand and bend over a tree to help Mills come out of the pit. The duo reunites with a tight hug and then Mills explains the meteorite to Koa in order to run through the last few miles. In the evening, the duo finally makes it to the base of the mountain. Mills ties some rope around Koa 
and she starts climbing up first. Then she smartly ties the rope in a very intricate way around trees and rock so it'll stand Mills' weight as he climbs up as well. Moments later they find the other half of the ship, and Mills immediately turns on the computer to confirm there's a rescue vessel coming for them. Koa goes looking for her family, and eventually finds all the destroyed cryotanks, so she gets furious with Mills for the lie. As she cries, Mills takes out a picture of Navine and explains he lost his daughter while he was on a job, meaning now he can't allow that to happen again. A sobbing Koa hugs Mills as he apologizes for everything. Suddenly the smaller pieces of meteorite begin falling on Earth, so Mills and Koa run to get inside the emergency pod. When Mills is about to push the launch button, a piece of meteorite hits the ship and causes the pod to fall down the mountain, knocking the duo out in the process. Koa wakes up first and quickly presses the launch button but the computer explains it can't launch in this position. As Mills begins waking up too, a huge dinosaur arrives and begins attacking the pod. Since the gun fell on the ground, Mills has to risk leaving the pod to retrieve it, only to discover it doesn't work. While a second dinosaur joins the attack, Mills runs to hide behind a piece of the ship and fixes the gun configuration. The dinosaurs suddenly surround him, so Koa grabs the Navine tape and plays it on the scanner to create a hologram of Navine outside the ship. Mills cries because he thinks he's getting to see his daughter one last time before his death but it turns out the dinosaurs are tricked and attack the hologram first. Using this distraction, Mills comes out and quickly kills the first creature while the other pushes the ship trying to reach Koa. Mills immediately comes after it too and after a few well-landed shots, this dinosaur dies as well. Thanks to the creature's push, the pod is now in the right position to launch. Before Mills can return though, the beast that he had shot back in the cave returns and begins chasing him. With a plan in mind, Mills runs to the geysers and makes the dinosaur walk into a hot blast of water that hits its face. Unfortunately, it doesn't cause much damage, but at that moment Koa shows up and stabs the dinosaur in the eye with the bone she prepared earlier. The dinosaur starts flailing and walks on top of another geyser, this time the blast hits it on the stomach and successfully burns it to death. Afterward, Mills and Koa return to the pod and manage to take off right before the meteorite hits Earth, triggering the extinction of dinosaurs. When the pod leaves the atmosphere, the autopilot guides it to the meeting point where a rescue vessel will be waiting for them. Since they're going home, Mills closes his eyes and pretends he would be reuniting with Navine soon, so Koa holds his hand to comfort him. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.